and we're live now. All right, everyone, for watching this. If you're not watching it live, if you're waiting until later uh, to watch it, I got Matt with Daddy Duck 365 out of South Carolina on with me tonight. And uh, we're going to be talking about pretty much everything under the moon waterfowl, but uh, talking about like videotaping hunts and camera equipment and pretty much wherever else the conversation takes us to. So uh, if you have any comments, just leave them below and we'll try to get to them and uh, we'll go on with it. All right. Hey guys, what's going on? You got to give me a second. I'm still trying to get set up here. My normal, uh, when I do live streams, I run everything off my laptop. But then I also put everything on my iPad. I got to make sure that the, the mute's on it. That way mm -hmm. I can look at uh, different, uh, I can look at comments a whole lot better and whatnot. So, Flo, what's happening? TRI, what's going on? Yeah, because it seems like when you have it set up that way, the comments, uh, you can see them they, faster instead of seeing it pop yeah, up they, on StreamYard. Yeah, they flow a whole lot faster. Notebooks full of ideas to do. <laughs> That's what I need to get on. I'm always scratch my head wondering like what kind of thing I'm gonna like try to come up with next. But it's like we talked about before with trying like just creating content in general, like oh you know, recording as much as we can and trying to like space it out. You know, yep. and saving stuff for later and that sort of thing. I mean, I had the day off, and I—I I mean, I was—I had some things to do around the house. Yeah. You know, but I did, I did put in, um, I did put in a bunch of uh, shorts. To, I think I did two shorts and did some stuff on Instagram, and then. Facebook, and then was able to put out one video today uh, quickly because I have not uploaded a video in almost two weeks. Yeah. So I wanted to get something, um, get something to do. Yeah, with to get my, my analytics, I mean, I'm probably jumping way ahead if we end up deep diving into that, but going into like the analytics and that sort of thing on what day to actually post. Um, it seems like I, I schedule all my stuff to drop Mondays around 11 o'clock. And it seems like that right. it's like right around lunchtime and going off of when most people are on YouTube watching stuff. That seems like my most popular time. My most popular times are usually on the weekends for whatever yeah. reason right now. But I try to drop on Wednesday, and the reason I do that at 9 a.m. is what I try to do is I'm trying to find the others, not my subscribers. Not, mm -hmm. not that I don't care about them, don't get me wrong, but I'm trying to find new subscribers. I'm trying to find new viewers. So, yep. you know... Not saying, oh, I got these. They'll never leave because I'm, you know, they could leave. What I'm yeah. getting at is trying to find new ones. So I've been trying to stick with a, a consistent date and time. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like uh, they told us that out there in recruiting. <laughs> uh, it's almost like the milkman back in the day. Like people expected the milkman to come by the house, you know, on a certain day at the certain time. And if they didn't show up, it kind of like raised – you know, it raised flags because people get in that rhythm and it's kind of just a mental thing of what humans do. You know, you, right. It's just like, it's just like eating breakfast, lunch and dinner. You know, everyone eats lunch around 12 o'clock, you know, it's just what right. it's just human nature. So I think, you know, it goes into like electronics too. <clears throat> yeah. Just trying to reach out, man. That's all I'm trying to do right now. So Flo. Um, but you know, with me, I'm, I'm pretty much just like you are. Um, we're very specific in our niche. Yeah. Scott Hill Outdoors, how you doing? Up, um, 
you know, uh, I'm trying to, um, I'm just trying to reach and just keep reach. But I also know that from my analytics from last year, and what I have been seeing on some bigger channels that they actually quit posting duck hunts in mid January. Yeah. And they started up at the beginning of August. Mm -hmm. And so now they're trying to get people fired up. Uh, they'll put, you know, a couple here and a couple there throughout the year, but yeah. they're, you know, with me, yeah, I just, I just, you know, I'm just throwing videos. I'm trying to put as many as I can. Mm -hmm. Mark J. Larson, what's up? What's up, Mark? But yet, I mean, when it comes into that, and that's where I kind of fumbled with content making, and I shouldn't say fumbled. I kind of, I don't know, I kind of held myself back because the way I wanted to do it was too broad. And then the way I started doing it, was like I took it a different direction with like how tos and uh, that sort of stuff. So I kind of got off off track, and it's because you know I couldn't. I was having trouble getting stuff on film, like me actually like, um, you know, killing stuff, and that's what people want to see. So, yeah. you know, I got away from that and started doing how tos, and then of course then I move out to Tennessee and I'm able to get kill shots and that sort of stuff. And I don't know. So it's kind of like I put myself in a different realm of niche with the how to stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I'm taking it on a different path now. And then going off of like, you know, what I wanted to do with like deer, Turkey, you know, fishing, waterfowl, all that sort of stuff. It was just, it was too broad for me. I couldn't just, I, I couldn't right. film and do all that sort of stuff. Well, I, uh, you know, I did put out some Turkey stuff this year and, <clears throat> Uh, I haven't done a, I haven't fished yet. I have yeah. not fished at all this year. Yeah, I didn't and, fish this year either. Um, I plan on doing a little bit in October. Um, once it starts to get a little cooler, I got a little place I can go, maybe catch some fish. Yeah. But um, maybe do a, a fall bass fishing thing. But, you know, I, I, I worked on a lot of cooking videos this year. Mm -hmm. and, and tried to make a wild game. Some of them, I just didn't have it. Yeah. And, um, and I did, you know, domesticated pork and chickens and stuff like that. But, you know, I did, I did get some, some duck recipes out. I got some, a lot of deer meat uh, recipes mm -hmm. out. So I'm just trying to give everybody a little, uh, a little flavor of the off season, you know? Yeah. So Flo, I'm out of, uh, uh, Montgomery County, Tennessee. It's right above Nashville. But yeah, and I mean, that kind of goes into like my off season filming because it's almost like during that middle of the split, I want to have enough wood duck and teal content to cover me in between, you know, to catch me up to like November when the big ducks, you know, uh, season comes in. Right. I think this year, this year, like what we spoke about before is, you know, I'm going to record pretty much every hunt and hopefully be successful. But during that October split, I'm hoping to get out there and at least smack a deer or two. And then I'm going to save some of that old content and post it up in August. Right. So. right. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to try to hunt. Uh, I'm actually going to try to deer hunt a little bit this year. Um, I got two pieces of private property that I can hunt. Um, mm -hmm. they've got, both of them got deer on it. You know, it's the luck of the draw. If you show up, I myself, I'm not looking for a buck. I am, yeah. I've already told the, the landowners, you know, I'll leave your bucks. I'll leave your bucks alone. Let me shoot a doe. You yeah. know, just let, let me shoot a doe, get it over with. I just want deer meat. I don't care. Yeah. You know, I don't care what's on top of the head. I yeah. never have. Can't eat, the, can't eat the horns. Can't eat the horns. Yeah. Now, now, you know, you know, that 32 point buck comes walking out, you know, world class, That's world record, state record, US record, height, weight, width, you know. Yeah. You know, That's my 308's gonna crack, you know, and at 50 <laughs> yards, I ain't missing. 
So, <laughs> you know, um, but, but I've been, I've been going out a lot in the summer, uh, hitting the, hitting the swamps, uh, trying to get some B-roll footage. I think B-roll footage is, is just as important, you know, getting out there and, and filming a, a, a moon, um, the last time we went scouting, it was me, Andy, and um, and Craig, and we were we had this bright full moon with uh, is either Jupiter or Saturn, one or the other, mm -hmm. um, right above it. I mean, it was cool as crap. Yeah, and um, I actually got ducks flying across it, you know. So when I was filming it, so you know, yeah. getting that B roll, you know, me standing up on the back of the boat looking out, getting that B-roll, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the guys in the boat, you know, they're sitting down laughing, cutting up, just getting as much B-roll as I could. I, you know, whether I use it or not is, you know, I may use it later for something, something to make, man, yeah. I wish I'd have kept that. I wish I, you know, I had mm -hmm. that. Um, I did that today. Um, yeah. You know, I had, I got up this morning so for Mark J and Slofo, uh, Billy, um, I mailed everything out this morning. Everything that they won Monday night, I mailed out and then left there, drove out into the country and pulled off the side of the road and just shot video of a plant of when I'm, you know, like a tire plant, you know, a commercial plant. Yeah. Um, because I got an idea in my head and that land that it sits on, I used to hunt it. Mm -hmm. um, I went behind an old grocery store that before they built that up was a, was a, what we call a Carolina Bay. Mm -hmm. It was just a low marshy area that always kept water in it. Ducks were always in there during the season. Yeah. It's all filled in now. I took video mm -hmm. of it, you know, hmm. for, for something later that I've got an idea that I want to put together later. You know, yep. and yep. I need that B roll. Mm -hmm. So, what I do, and we're going to talk about cameras. I don't have expensive cameras, not at, not at all. Hell, I've done lost one somewhere. <laughs> um, hang on, where it go? And ah. grown legs. And ungrown legs. Um, here's a camera right here. This is an actual, I don't know if you can see that. It's it's an actual cheap camera, like 175 bucks. Yeah. Um, it takes somewhat good video, uh, but it has no zoom. Don't don't get all whapped up about this because that ain't nothing. The zoom yeah. is all back here, and it's only 16. So um you know, it doesn't zoom in from far distances, but it's a good flogging, a vlogging camera. Yeah. You know, and I do a lot of vlogging videos on with this. Mm -hmm. Um that usually stays in my truck. Uh, you know, when I when I when I leave for the day, um there's another camera. Um this is just a Sony handy cam. Yeah. Uh I don't know if you can mm -hmm. Read yeah, 9.2 9. megapixels. Yeah, yeah just in the can. Yep. CX 402, mm -hmm. three or $400. This is this right here is my main camera. Yeah. And when I get up and when I leave the house, these two cameras are in my truck, charged up, ready to go, because you never know when I'm going to see something that I'm like, oh crap, I want to, I want to get, the, I want to get that on video. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, it could be as simple as geese walking across a parking lot, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, you know, I want that. I want to keep a camera with me at all times. I mean, cell phones are great. They're great. They make awesome videos, but. Um, it's the quality and, and the mic quality on it. It's terrible. Yeah. Food. I mean, I've done videos with these, you know, yeah. 
and this is always it. Most everybody's got one of these in their pocket now anyway. Mm-hmm. So any kind of camera, you know, that you can get. Um, I did a video. Uh, might have been usually the last spring or the spring before. I was coming back from scouting turkeys. And that mm-hmm. morning, I didn't hear or see the first turkey until I passed this one field and they were everywhere. Yeah. I got video of them. I got out. I had a tripod. You know, I got out, set up the tripod, videoed them in the field, used it as B roll for another video. Mm-hmm. Um, And then on down the road, I had five deer that were in the middle of a field, broad daylight. And when I pulled over, they started bounding and I was Mm -hmm. getting them as they were bounding across the field. And then just down the road, there was a flock of geese, resident geese in a field. (laughs) You know, it was just one Mm -hmm. of those days. If I had just this, I would have never got them. I'm quite, I'd have never got the good, the good, a good shot. Mm-hmm. Phones are that's what, running out. It, that that's what I noticed with uh, using my phone, and you know I came in I came into more trouble with the microphone part of it because uh, it's like distorted, especially if yeah. you're holding it a certain way. And then um, I found when I was just using my GoPro to record hunts that my phone this is on a pro side of it the phone was better for low light versus my GoPro. Right. And so I was able to get, you know, a better image with it. But I mean, who's going to hold a shotgun and hold up a phone, you know, and shoot all at the same time. So, yeah, it wasn't until I got to see, I don't actually have like a handy cam, like a can like a video camera, like you do. I got a, um, it's a Canon, uh, SL. Well, it's a DL. Um, and get the phone number. I think it's like a, SLX or something like that. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. But the actual big camera and the lens I use on it is a uh, it's a low light lens, so it's a 2.8. So it opens up that aperture a lot more where it collects more light. Right. So I think with a uh, with my filming having something like, you know, like you do with either a, a video camera like that or having an actual camera with the, you know, good lens and uh, when I talk about aperture guys, so my my background is photography. Um, before the army, I shot for, um, a newspaper and I worked at a uh, camera store for like almost eight years. And, um, so when I talk about photography stuff, if I confuse y'all just ask in the comments, but, um, what you're going to be looking for is the F stop. So pretty much you'll see like, you know, 50 mm, which 50 millimeter, that's like the zoom of it. And then the F stop, you'll see like a little, uh, lowercase F and a number. The lower the number, the better it is for low light situations. Well, I think I got everything here now. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I mean, we we can sit here and talk cameras or what I use and some little tricks that I have, um, especially with um, with waterfowl because that's you know. <laughs> It's hard enough to video a turkey by yourself, you mm-hmm. know, to self-film a turkey. Mm-hmm. But self-filming ducks and trying to film and shoot, that, in my opinion, is tougher, way yep. tougher. Um, but I think I've come up with sort of a system. I got a few other things that I want to get, but um, I'm going to show you this. Now, I hunt... I hunt a lot what's known as open public water and it's not WMA. It's, it's not wildlife management area. It's just open public, which means I can be sitting there hunting and I can have fishermen come in on me. I can have deer hunters come in on me. You know, I, you know, guys riding yeah. boats. I mean, it doesn't, you know, um, this little deal right here, um, yeah, where you can screw it into the tree. Uh, and I can screw it in the tree. This is a trail a trail cam mount. Mm-hmm. And I can screw this into the tree. And 
I have an adapter that I can put on here and screw it up, you know, just take the wing nut, screw it up, to tighten it up. Mm -hmm. And I can literally mount my cam right on top. Or if I have the, um, the GoPro housing, you know, I can mount a GoPro right yep. here. Mm -hmm. So now I've got, so I'm, I'm doing angles with this. I'll have one camera low on the tree, mm -hmm. just, a, you know, above the waterline, but low on the tree, getting me a wide view of like my decoys. Yeah. Then I'll go across and find another tree and set up a GoPro there facing back at me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I run four GoPros. So then I'll have one that's kind of tilted up facing over the decoy. So any ducks coming in, you know, it, there's an angle there. I can get that angle. Yeah. Um, the biggest issue with GoPros is batteries. Mm -hmm. Batteries are the biggest issue. So what I did is I bought a couple of these battery chargers. Mm -hmm. And I just take, like on this particular GoPro 7, I took the battery out of it. Now I can plug this if I can find the hole there, there we go. I can plug it and it'll, now I think this battery charger is dead. I got to charge them up, but it'll run this GoPro for well over eight hours. Really? I will run out of memory on my SD card before I'd kill the battery. Yeah. That's interesting. And, and that's without, that's without a battery in it. And there's no battery inside. Yeah. Huh. Well, There's I wish no I would have been that. Wow, now, that would have saved me a lot of money. And this right here cost me 20 bucks. Yeah. At Walmart. Cost me 20 bucks at Walmart. So mm -hmm. then, all right, so 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 let's say now I have this mounted in the tree. Mm -hmm. And I have several types of mounts. I have this is a one with a with a clamp on it. Yep. That happens to be the housing for my uh for this GoPro um seven black. Yeah. So to kind of give you an idea, I'm gonna clamp this to the table. I'm gonna put it in kind of backwards here. To, for, to, to show you what yeah. I'm doing. All right, so now I've got that in, right? Mm -hmm. Well, here on the side, now yeah, I, took the, I took the it's port housing off. Mm -hmm. So now it's it's not waterproof anymore. Yeah. That's, my, that's one of my issues. It's not waterproof because I got, so now I can just plug this in. And, of course, I can't see in the dark, so... <laughs> All right, so now I have this, okay? Yeah. Now, what am I going to do with this? Here's the next thing. What do I do with that? I can't just let it drop because yeah. it could pull out, right? And I just lost 20 bucks. Well, here's where my military training came in. <laughs> you know what that is, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like a mag. mag. Pouch. This is an M4 mag pouch. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Slides right in. Yeah. Can you see that? I mean, am I? Here, I'll switch to switch to view. There we go. All right. So now I've got an M4 mag pouch. I got your, um, you know, your your uh, Molly Molly stuff, and then all I do is I just come across and just attach it. Yeah, over here at the top. Yeah, sit there and hang from it. Snap it in, and just get my cords and everything out of the way. And there I and there I am. I'm running. Yeah. Hmm. Um, if I carry, if I wear this on my head, yeah, 
I can attach this to my belt on my waist and mm -hmm. just run the cord up my back and plug it in. And it's plenty of cord. Yeah. And if you need a longer one, you just order a longer one. Hmm. That's interesting. But, but that's what I do so I can, you know, have more more battery life, have mm -hmm. you know, just have more more out there. And again, it I mean this weighs nothing. Yeah. I mean, you know, maybe a pound and a half, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, all total. And you know, so I you know, I've used this 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 I've used this setup. As a matter of fact, I had this set up on that self-filmed turkey hunt I did. Plus, I had my my um, my handy cam on a tripod mm -hmm. when I shot that turkey. That's how I was able to zoom in and out and do a bunch of stuff with it. Yeah. And then I just cut and edited with this mm -hmm. on some of the good, you know, the better parts of it. Yeah. But I had this sitting, you know, ten feet from the the turkey decoy <coughs> on the ground, you know, catching yeah. video. So, I mean, and this is what I, this is what I use. And I mean, you know, I, it's a gooseneck, so I can move it around. I can attach it to yeah, trees. Yeah, get all the different angles and stuff. Yeah. yeah, I can attach this to a tree limb, you know, and, and, and do my thing. But these two mounts, these are my, my go-to mounts right here. Yeah. Right here. Um, I'm trying to think think of the name for that because I remember when that first came out. That arm, I think it was called like a gorilla arm, but that was years ago. I think it, that was back in like 2007, 2006. But I well, can't remember the names of them now. What was that? The name of that arm that you use. Um, the, uh, on, this one. Mm -mm, the other one. This one. Yeah, the bit the big black one. Yeah, yeah, this one right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just a um, heck. You can I, buy call it, I think it's called like a gorilla arm, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure though. I can't. I don't know what the. It's made by Subtic. Um, hmm. I'll tell you. Um, um, I. I got this idea from, from Cody from after five outdoors. Yeah. Uh, when he came down to South Carolina and hunted with me, he had like four or five of these things stuck all over my boat. I mean, we had so many angles. It was, I mean, it wasn't even funny, dude. I mean, they were just angle, yeah. angle, angle, angles. Um, He's a good and, dude. I like his content. Oh yeah. He said, or buy a longer cord at Walmart next to the batteries. Uh, yep. They're all cheap. Yeah. As long as it fits your GoPro, one size fits the GoPro, the other side, you know, just a regular USB cord. Yeah. I yeah, might Cody has everything. Yeah. I might end up doing that this season is running a cord because, you know, it's funny that you brought that up because I didn't even think about that was the battery, the battery issue. And it, it's almost like, I spent more time trying to think and I'm like, all right, as soon as the, you know, the guys I'm hunting with, if they, you know, if they look like they're perking up or they're seeing something, you know, I'm going ahead and I'm like, you know, trying to hit my button to get the, you know, to get the GoPro fired up or, you know, something of the sort. So yeah. to try to save the battery. But I mean, if I could keep the thing running the entire time and just get this massive memory card, I can just edit it when I get home. The, um, you know, I think Slowfo was talking, uh, Billy was talking about the, uh, the GoPro case, uh, the mm -hmm. waterproof type cases. Yeah. The, the problem with that is, is it's, it's waterproof and you can't get your cable in it. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I've got a whole bunch of them down here. So unless I cut a hole in it, stick the cable in and then caulk the so outside. Done. Mm -hmm. then I can't use this cable but only for that application yeah and I want you know I want to when I use these I want it to pick up the sound yeah because it may be picking up a sound where it's at in an angle where another GoPro or another camera is not picking up that audio yeah 
you know, it's I, I got to, you know, if it's pouring down rain, I'm not going to hunt anyway. If yep. it's pouring down rain, I'm not going to video. Uh, unless if I put I do, something I'm in a blind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unless I'm in a blind. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the water the waterproof case, it, you know, it does the same thing with the sound like what you're talking about. It cuts it cut yeah, it cuts the sound, the waterproof case. Um I had a beautiful shot on um on a duck last year. And I mean the, the GoPro kept captured it perfect. I mean it just and um so I used the video from it, mm -hmm. but I had to augment the video from a the audio from another video and, and then sync it together where, you know, I didn't have to, because it was like, you got this big boom, you know, from the shotgun report yeah. and in the waterproof case, it was, you yeah. know, it's, mm -hmm. it sounded like a little kid fart. I mean, it's, <laughs> <laughs> which, which brings me into, you know, you just talked about editing. What, so what software do you use to edit? Wondershare. Okay. Wondershare from from Aura. Wondershare. Do you have to pay for it? Uh, initially, and then after that, it's free updates. Okay. Um, don't I can't remember. I think it was like sixty bucks when I got it. Yeah. Um, it's pretty much now they have. That's for the basics. Now they have a lot of. Um, extra editing stuff, extra effects, sound effects, and all this other stuff that you can buy. Once you buy it, you I mean, one time you're done. Yeah. But they have a whole lot of other effects that you can buy. Cinematic effects, sounds, mm -hmm. you know, um, explosions. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I, I could spend two paychecks buying – you know, buying that stuff. And I just yeah. haven't done it yet. Cause I, not that I don't need it or don't want it. I just haven't done it. Yeah. See, I've heard of a lot of guys using, um, Adobe premiere and I'm, and I messed around with it and it's just way too, like I ain't the smartest person out there and not the brightest crown in, in the, in the pack. So, you know, I just, I stick with something that's free on my phone and I use iMovie and I just take my dear old time with it while I'm sitting on the couch, just editing away that way. But I would like to, I would like to get into like Adobe Premiere or some like, you know, um, a software like what you use and actually be able to deep dive into it and play with like the sound and, you know, get in. Cause obviously the better uh, image and the better sound that you get, it's like what you said before. Um, yep. You know, pe people want to see that, and it's gonna it's gonna draw more, you know, subscribers, you can, likes, you know, all that sort of stuff. You can get away in a hunting video, especially ducks with shaky footage. Mm -hmm. You can get away with shaky footage. What you're not going to get away with is audio. Uh, the audio, people talking, pe things going on. You're not going to get away with that. You got to have great audio. My my goal. Um, by next year, I'm hoping to have, uh, right now I have one GoPro seven black. Mm -hmm. I have a GoPro, uh, three plus, and I have two, uh, of these action cams, you know, they're just cheap action cams. Mm -hmm. My goal is. If I ever get paid from YouTube or ever again, is to start buying at least three of the GoPro blacks, seven blacks. Yeah. And then buy wireless mics. Mm -hmm. And that way, and no matter where I put this, people, you know, I'll be able to get audio from, from people. Yeah. And if I can buy, I usually hunt two to three people to begin with. Mm -hmm. So if, if everybody's wearing a wireless mic, 
you know, and you're having your duck blind conversations, you know, yeah. the, you know, the, 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 what the guy, what guys talk about, you know, bills yeah. and money. And, you know, I can get some of those conversations if I got the mic on. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, they were talking about how to, Boondocker Adventure said, how do y'all clip all the footage together? Cause I shoot with a Canon video camera. In in Wondershare, um, so I, I take the video from my camera and I download it to a, my computer. I put it in a file and I label that file. Uh, generally, I label it what I close to what I'm going to title that video. You know, that kind of gives me an idea. So, for example, today, if if y'all haven't seen the video I did today on the 2022-2023 waterfowl predictions. Mm -hmm. Well, I titled my file just that. 2022-2023 waterfowl predictions. And I put all the video in that that I took and put it in that file. And then I go to Wondershare. I get it up and running. And then all it is is drag and drop uh, into the main window and then I take all the clips and push them all together and drop them down in the timeline. And then I go, I started right at the beginning and I start listening and, and I'm watching the video. And usually I have a minute, sometimes longer where I'm just getting things set up, you know, but I got the video running. Yeah. And then I stop it right before I get ready to talk. And then I clip and take off that excess portion that I don't need mm -hmm. and then continue to another point, stop, do, you know, clip that portion that I don't need. And it all pushes together. And um, I found out in videos now today's video didn't have, didn't have this, but a lot of times if you'll have if you'll talk for about 20, 30 seconds and then stop, change position, your change your camera position just slightly, you know, bring it off to the side, bring it off, you know, kind of mm -hmm. move it around a little bit. Yep. Then cut it on and then start talking again. You'll get those breaks in the clip where it looks like it's jumps. That take that actually captures somebody's attention. Yep. Most people think, oh man, it's just, you know, they, they think of a they think of a movie. You know, we're not doing movies, you know, we're not mm -hmm. cinematic photographers. You know, at least I'm not. Yeah. So it's you know, so you're gonna have that little jump, that little break, but that mm -hmm. actually catches somebody's attention to go, oh, did I miss something? Yep. And it they keeps them listening. Mm -hmm. it, it keeps them hooked in a little bit longer. Yep. I can't pr I can't pronounce that guys uh S Sathis. hopefully I didn't uh, completely butcher that but yeah that's what we were talking about at the very beginning Earlier, of yeah. the live stream is that GoPros are terrible for uh for low light situations right and when you're shooting wood ducks in the morning it's unless rough. you got unless you've got a dedicated cameraman <laughs> behind you yeah, the only way you're going to catch it is on a GoPro on your head. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> that's 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 it. And that's uh, what it, it just confirms what you just said earlier too about um, you know filming waterfowl is actually I'd say it's one of the hardest things to film just because yeah. of how acrobatic that ducks are and like they come in at different you know different times, different speeds, like all different angles. You know, it's hard to at the right place at the right time especially for us now right. you know like in the atlantic flyway like you got to be on your game to film out there just because yep. the limited amount of you know opportunities that you have right so, you don't you, you if you don't take that shot then you're not shooting a duck yeah um, it's not like the guys out there in kansas you know they have thousands of ducks flying around all day every day you know right it's like <laughs> Of course, you're going to be good footage. You're going to have a good, you know, a good channel of nothing but kill shots and that sort of stuff. 
Um, the, and I, I'm, I, I can't. Is, is it? Is it? Is it Stathis? Is, am I pronouncing that correct, Stathis? If I'm pronouncing that correct, please say yes or no. <laughs> um, but uh, he asked, "Do you have any suggestions for any other cam for early morning?" Um, that's what I said about like my big camera with, uh, you know, I can do video okay. on it and I can change out my lens and have like the lower F stop, you know, the, the aperture, you know, opens it right. up and it brings in more light. So, and you now, can mess with your, your film speed and all that stuff too. Did you, did you by chance catch the video, uh, the live stream I did with Steven finally? Uh, I think I did. I've, li okay. I've listened to pretty much all, all your live streams. I, I listened to him on the way to work. Now he, I was showing him this camera here, this little Sony handy cam. And he mm -hmm. actually said this and I'm paraphrasing of course, but he said for most self filmers, you know, content creator who do self filming, this is probably one of the better cameras you can get. Mm -hmm. it's got a wide angle collects a lot of light and it's lightweight and you can you know if if i'm sitting there and i've gotten pretty good because of what i do for a living but you know i can you know i can open this thing up and i can sit there and just follow ducks if you know if i have to but again i got this in my hand and when it's time to shoot i'm either gonna have to drop it put it up you know, have it on a tether, you know, yep. so I don't drop it in the water. Mm -hmm. Um or having um or having an, a, a cameraman behind us, you know, and that's the only way is the only way I can see it. Um now he came out with a video and he's got this uh I think it's they about arrow flame or something of that nature mm -hmm. it's on one of his videos his name is steven finally guys i mean you can look him up youtube steven finally and he showed an arm that has a ratchet strap on it that he puts on the tree and he hooks his camera on it and it and it just you know it just moves oh, yep i've seen this before so if you're sitting there and, and, and you're, you know, you, you turn your camera on and you got ducks and you're, you're sitting there and you're, you're moving it to, you get, to, you're, you're sitting there, you're, you're moving it, you know, you're, you're moving it, you're calling. And when you got to shoot, if you just, if you can train yourself to put it in one spot, like me, I hang my gun in a tree. I reach drop, you know, I'm not dropping the camera, just letting go of it. It's going to mm -hmm. stay right there. I can grab the gun, come around and shoot. Um, but he is a professional videographer, you know, so he's in the tent. I mean, he's a lot of this stuff he's doing, he's, he's filming for other people. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And I've, you know, I'm, I want to get that arm, but that arm is about 250 bucks. I wonder if you could, <laughs> you're going to hit me for this. Cause I know you're not, you, this ain't your, ain't your uh, style, but I wonder if you could make it for a lot cheaper. You know, um, like if somebody's got like a, if you have like a welder, it ain't nothing to, you know. Well, you need a ball, you need a ball joint, you need yeah. a couple of them. You need a swinging arm, but you know, one swinging arm that's hooked to another. Yeah. So, you know, so you need a, I don't know if you can, okay. I, you just put something now, on my list. Now, I might try Jason, you know, uh, Ralphie would probably do it just to do it to say he did it yeah but i don't know if you could actually make it you might make it for a few bucks cheaper yeah but you know uh you have to have a base to put up next to the tree mm -hmm. a strap it, it's going to come off like off you know, this is the base it's got to come off the arm's got to come off and then it's got to have a you know a nipple for another arm to sit on yeah. You know, and then and then it swings. So you got mm -hmm. you got the swing, you know, where you can move it around and it swings around. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And then I think the biggest thing for me that I would have trouble with is getting the actual yeah. mount with the uh to mount the you know, mount the camera and have like the, the little arm thing for it. 
Yeah. Yeah. TRI says Muddy has a camera arm for like 70 bucks. Yeah. Yes. I saw that the other day. Perfect. So I wouldn't even build one at that point. 70 bucks. Not, I'll not for that price. Up. No. Yeah. Now I will, you know, I will build some things, but, um, hey, well, you can buy it for cheap. There's no point. But in let, wheel. let me tell you what broke me of doing that. All right. So a lot of people don't know this about me and I don't even know if you know about it, Chris. You know, I was in the Marine Corps for six years. I was a police officer for almost 20 years. And then I went overseas mm -hmm. and I went overseas as a contractor and I was a instructor. I, I was teaching uh, democratic policing to different countries. Mm -hmm. After being there for about a year, my contract got switched from DOS department of state to department of defense. Yeah. Now, no offense to the military, but y'all re recreate the wheel 15 times in two days. Very true. And I got frustrated with that. Yeah. And, you know, the wheel was created. You can improve on the wheel, but it's still a wheel. And if it's already created, <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to re recreate it. <laughs> Because the yeah the the U.S. Army broke me of that when I had to yep. work with them. I think that's why. It's so it, it's something I'm always thinking. Like, oh, uh, yeah. I wonder if I could do it this way. You know. Now that's a cool idea. Scott Hill Outdoors. This right here, the premier. I use, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a cool idea. Hmm. Hey, if that's him in the picture, I like the beard, dude. Oh, yeah. Tons of green, too. <laughs> but, um, you know, so these are my little, you know, we were talking about this the other day and, and um, you know, my little tricks of, of just self-filming. I mean, I, I usually, like I said, I usually hunt with two or three guys and they'll help me out. Yeah. But, um, you know, when I'm hunting by myself, you know, because I'm the camera guy. I mean, I'll. I, I when we get to where we're hunting, generally um, we start. You know, the first thing we do is is decoys, mm -hmm. and they're out putting decoys out while I'm trying to light them up and film them. Mm -hmm. And then we switch a little bit to get me in there a little bit, and we're setting. I mean, come on, you know, if you're not setting things up, you know. <laughs> Uh, you're not really doing it right. I mean, you got to, you sometimes have to, all right, here's the scene guys. I'm going to come walking in, <laughs> you know, yeah. film me yeah. doing this. Yeah. And then, then we're going to stop and then I'm going to film you doing this. And we're going to put these breaks in here and, you know, yeah, it's a, uh... all right, cool brother. Uh, Scott Hill, where are you out of? Just out of curiosity. What state are you in? Um, yeah, go ahead and name drop that uh the WMA. Yeah, I want, yeah, go ahead and name drop where them where them ducks were shot. Send me a pen. <laughs> Send me a GPS cord. Um, but you know we have to set. I set things up. I, I mean, I have it in my head how Michigan. Okay, I think you're gonna see a good year this year, bro. Oh yeah, I I really do. You're gonna get an early fall. And you're gonna get a you're gonna get a push of ducks, mm -hmm. so be ready. I'd be out there on the Great Lakes killing them divers. What I'd be doing? I want to see Lake Erie freeze the slap up. I mean, I want it frozen. I want ships out there. They got to put ice breaking ships out on that lake to get transport ships over there. That would push so many way. ducks for, so far south. That'd be crazy. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying I've, uh. but yeah, I, I'm kind of the same way. Like I like to set, you know, set my stuff up. Like I like to set the decoys. Um, I'm normally typically always the first person at the hole. Um, 
you know, whether yeah. I'm hunting with a blind, you know, with people or in like a timber hole with somebody. Um, so when it comes to filming, really? like, I, I work all the camera stuff pretty much myself. And I've never right. had anyone like film for me. Um, so I, if I had someone film for me, I'd probably get really addicted to it. And I would probably I, lean off of the film. Like I said, the, the guys that I hunt with, that, that I hunt with all the time, you know, um, I am the old man of the sea when it comes to them. I mean, I'm the, I'm the oldest mm -hmm. and they usually beat me to the hole, especially if we got to walk. Cause I, I, that running crap just ain't for me no more. Yeah. I ain't got the legs or the lungs and I'm way too fat. But, uh, when I get there, you know, I'll, I'll do some filming in the dark, um, that kind of stuff. And then, They'll hold the camera for me, especially if I've got to do uh, a, a a vlog style, you know, something I'm talking. I need them because I, I got my tripods. You know, they'll set the tripod up and you know, or brace the camera somehow. Yeah, and then hold it for me. But uh, but when I have to do um, do it myself, man, I'm especially out in the field. Yeah, you know, lugging everything, which which now brings me to this point. <laughs> if now this isn't the good one, this is a Pelican case, but it's not the best. This is the Vault, and I bought this to put my cam. All my cameras go in here. Yeah. Now it's not waterproof. This one is not waterproof. Mm -hmm. So guys, if you're going to buy the vault and you're thinking, oh, I can get this for 30, 40 bucks. It's not waterproof. It's water resistant on a 80 degree clear day. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you spill a Coke on it, there's Coke going to get inside. I'm, I'm telling you, it just, but it, it protects my cameras. So yeah. I put everything in there. My batteries go in there. My cameras go in there. I've got holes cut out for everything to sit in. Mm -hmm. And then everything else in my, for my camera stuff. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Hang on. Got a malfunction. Uh-oh. Everything else goes into a right now is going into a small day pack. So all my, my, my mounts and everything yeah, and just small stuff will, will go in, will go in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I just got a, um, a waterproof camera, camera bag. Gotcha, Billy. And uh, I mean, it works, it works pretty well for me. So, I mean, I can't store much in it because it's, you know, it's on the small side, but it's enough for me to bring, you know, my GoPro, which more than likely I walk out in the woods with it on my head already. And, uh, you know, my digital camera that's able to record. And then I got uh, two lenses with it. So I got the uh, telephoto lens. I think it's like 55 to 250. It's all image stabilized and all that stuff. And then I got a 50 millimeter 2.8. There's a one point, and it's a two point eight. But anyway, extra lens, but that all stays in the camera bag, and then I can attach my tripod to the side of it. But right. See, my, I want a new, a new vlogging style camera. I want a, what I want is a Canon M50. Yeah. And you know, I want the big fifty millimeter lens. You know, I want the four inch screen on the back. Mm -hmm. You know, I want the wind reducing. Um, yeah, um, for, the, for the mic. For the mic. Yeah. You know, um, you know, you're looking at a couple, you know, $1,500 for, for the, for the setup. And, uh, but I want it for, for the vlogging stuff, you know, mm -hmm. um, is basically what I want it for, you know, and if I can, you know, I'm generally a boat driver, so like I said, if somebody's in my boat, they can use it to film me and film stuff as we go by it and that kind of stuff. Yeah. 
But um, but you know, angles getting, you know, I I mean, I get all kind of B roll stuff, man. I'll I'll hook one of these clamps up to the boat, mm-hmm. and I'll turn the GoPro on, and I got a spotlight. You know, I think you probably have seen some of the nighttime footage. Yeah. You know that I've done, and and um, where I'm lighting up the world with my spotlights and running the rivers and running the swamps and whatnot. I think it's cool footage. Number one, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's, you know, any night I could know, probably you know, do a ten minute video and just run it at night and be, yeah. you know, see alligators and coyotes and everything. Yeah. Um, I have. I did this one time and it was, I did it by accident, but I had, uh, I've got a phone mount. Now, you know, I, I drive a go devil. So mm-hmm. I've got this big grab bar in front of me and I've got a phone mount. And generally I put a phone up there and turn my on X on. And, you know, cause it's, I mean, as much as I know the swamp, I don't know it all. Yeah. And, uh, I use it to kind of, you know, if I get off that, track, yeah. you know, to get back on track get back on track and um but i hooked my gopro up to it one day and i had an extended battery on it you know the battery but i turned the camera around for whatever reason Mm -hmm. and uh, we came off the water and i was in a hurry i loaded the boat up you know whatever i thought would blow out i threw it in the back of the truck and i took off Mm -hmm. and my gopro was filming everything behind me and you know it was it was interesting <laughs> to say the least yeah. you know i didn't use any of it i haven't but it was interesting to say the least you know going down the road at 60 miles an hour yeah it, it and that clamp what i'm getting is that clamp held yeah you know, it didn't it didn't pop off it didn't mm-hmm. bend over you know it stayed right where i wanted it yeah <laughs> Yeah, so so the uh, SoFlo or yeah, you know, SoFlo Outdoors is saying Sony has one of the best autofocus in the game. I would yeah. go to argue that they make one of the best, like just cameras in general in the game. Really, um, when it comes to like they're like their vlogging type uh, interchangeable lens bodies. So yeah, just because of their like the way that they have their mirror inside, and there's a bunch of tech technical terms for it been kind of out of the loop for a few years with, with it but yeah they they're expensive as crap though so you want one of their good ones you're going to be spending like two thousand dollars for it you know i've seen uh, another thing guys i mean I, I i don't know if everybody in here is a duck hunter but uh, if you're doing uh fishing videos you can buy, and I forget the name of it, but they have actually got a stern light that you can hook your GoPro to, and it actually has a cord coming out of it that you can hook your to your camera, which runs to your battery to your boat battery, mm-hmm. and it's it just trickles, and you can get footage from that pole, that stern pole. Yeah. And, While you're um, talking about, I'll find the name of it because I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I can't remember the name of it. Um, My buddy is sponsored by them. I I thought about getting one of those, um, to pop out, you know, on the duck blind. You know, when I when I put the duck blind up, it'll be up and you know, you know what I'm saying. It'll be up yeah. and out of the way. Hmm. Uh, I'm looking. He normally hashtags your stuff all the time and on his uh, Instagram. That's cool, Scott. Rail Blaza. I don't know what the name of it is. Yeah. Or no, that's a Rail Blaza, Rail Blazer, whatever is a. Uh, they make it. They make attachments. But what you're talking about is a. Uh, um, something. Yogo or YOLO, YOLO, yeah, uh, YOLO, YOLO, mm-hmm. yeah, YOLO, yeah, tech. yep, that's it. Yeah, I, actually, really I just, it. I just found it on my buddy's, on my buddy's Instagram. As soon as he said it, 
Yep, Billy got it in Yellow Tech. He wins the grand prize of the day of listen to me talk. So I, I ain't got no giveaways. I'm sorry. I you're, do you're got good there, Billy. You just sitting here listening to me talk. <laughs> this cat's trying to get out of the room. Yeah, Yellow Tech. Oh, so oh. I I talked to my not to get completely off topic. I just remember remembered this, and I figured I'd tell you instead of texting you later on. But uh, I talked to the guy making my drive shaft for my engine, and uh, he said it, it will be a hundred percent ready next week. Awesome. I think tonight we can just talk about a lot of different things, but nothing in there's no script, just talk. But yeah. I have a question for you, hmm. and it's right behind you. Your camo netting that you got yep. behind you mm -hmm. is that on a frame? Uh, so I made, I made I made the frame. I reinvented the wheel. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so pretty much what I did was take a two by four, uh, you know, flipped it on its side, made it long enough to where it covers covers the uh, the, the webcam. And what I did was used an electrical conduit, and uh, I think it's like half inch. You could probably use quarter inch. Yeah. But, um, you know, I drilled like a hole into the two by four on um, both ends and then one in the middle. And then the uh, this, the burlap stuff is like the regular stuff from Walmart. Right. And you pretty much all just like, drape it over it. Yeah. I was, th um, I was thinking about doing, I was going to actually make a PVC frame uh, to put in my shed uh, so it'd be behind me as my backdrop. Yeah. But you know, I, I made it. I made it this way because obviously this is my our guest room, and mm -hmm. uh, my wife doesn't want like when I get done doing this, like she wants it all to be like as if I was never up here. So I'm able to like break it down and I throw it underneath the bed. Yeah. So you would never even know it was up here. But that's the reason why I didn't go with the PVC is because I wouldn't be able to break it down. Break it down is fat. Okay. Yeah. But it works. <laughs> I'm just reading Billy's comment down below. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, coming up with um, I, I tell you another another trick. Um, I haven't done it yet, but I saw it done, and I'm waiting on the right moment. Mm -hmm. Is uh, my wife has a wooden a wooden lazy Susan? You know that little deal that just spins on the middle of the table mm -hmm. and I'm thinking about getting a piece of black fabric to put across the table, put the lazy suits in, in the middle and then lift up the black fabric behind it and attaching it somehow, you know, getting it up to where it stands up, like a little yeah. frame or something. It sits on the table and just flip that over. Don't care if there's any wrinkles in it. Yeah. And if I'm, let's say, talking about a duck call, I can set my camera up, put this on the Lazy Susan, and give it a slight spin, and it looks like the the duck call is, you know, you know, you're getting a yeah, you a know, full it's on just, like rotation and a showcase of it. Right. It's like yeah. It, yeah. You know, think. I mean, I you know, I, you got to think out of the box. You know, yeah. when you're when you're when you're thinking about your videos, um, uh, try it out. Um, I have been experimenting, and I don't. I mean, I'm just going to give away. You know, but I've I've been experimenting with the Thor effect. Uh, -huh. you know, where Thor, you know, he sticks his hand out and he catches his hammer. Yeah. You know, and I've been experimenting with that, setting up a camera, uh, one close, you know, you know, usually about chest up, yeah. another from a different angle, and catching something, you know, and then doing something with that. Yeah. You know, um, to put in, in the videos to give a wow factor, to give a, oh, I, I need to watch this a little bit longer. Yeah. I, I'm finding out more and more that you need to do things like that um, to keep to keep the interest going. 
to keep the interest to get the get the retention. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I've got I've got an idea for a video that's uh, and I got to wait the duck season. I just that's the only thing is I just got to wait the duck season. Yeah, you know. Um, so when it happens, you know, I can I know how to do it. Yeah, you know. So you know, I spend a lot of time b rolling in the backyard doing silly things to try to figure out how to do it. And then once I figure it out and, and figure the editing part of it out, I say, okay, I know how to do this. So when that moment hits and I'm going, Oh man, if I put this in that video, I could do it out there and, you know, get the full mm -hmm. effect. Yep. And that, and that's what I know I'm going to do this next coming season is um, doing the splits with the different shots. Um, so that way it's not just a steady, like me talking the entire time like this, blah, blah, blah for five minutes and then have 10 minutes worth of hunting footage and then coming back and be, it being straight on. Like, yeah, I do want to split it, split it up. Um, I, no, I'm not going to, I'm not talking junk on their channel, but if you take, for example, cause you, you know, you always have to compare and contrast what other channels are doing and that sort of right. stuff. So like 24 seven hunt, the way that they film and they have like splits in there where like, um, you know, they go back and they're like, you know, already back at the house, you know, at the clubhouse, yeah. you know, the hunt's already tell, you know, done, but they're talking about like that moment that they yeah. just showed. like, I find that. And then they uh, switch back to the hunt to wh where that was happening. Yeah. yeah. And I find that interesting. You know, they're kind of, yeah. I think one of the only other channels out there doing that. I'm not saying I'm going to copy it per se, but I think it's a, you know, just something else to maybe to sprinkle well, in well you i don't think you'd be copying it because the if you go to i mean if you're not a subscribed to meat eater <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. you're really missing out um zachary's here yep. um the the meat eater has a sub channel called duck blind diners or duck blind dinner. Mm -hmm. And it's a chef, Jean, uh, I think Bougeau or something, but uh, they do that a lot. And I sit there and, Hey, listen, I study other people's stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really do. I sit there and I study it and go, that's a great idea. Can I do that? I don't want to be copying them, Yeah, but I think, you know, by, by watching other videos and going, you know, that's an idea. That's something that can be done. That that's, that's something I want to look forward. If, if I get that opportunity, I'm going to start incorporating small pieces of that. Yeah. You know, not their video, of course, my own video. Yeah. But, um, I think, I think that in, in our, and in today's age, um, doing the video portion of somebody's somebody else's stuff because if hunt 24 seven is doing it duck dynasty does it meat eater does it you know there's there's a lot of big big channels uh, that do it um in today's world there is no more secrets yeah. It's just like hunting public land. There's there's no secrets anymore. Yeah. You know, I mean, everybody knows where the big oak tree is by the small pond that feeds into the little creek. Yeah. You know, there's just no, I mean, there's just no secrets, in this, especially in this world. Mm -hmm. And I think Zachary is 100%, you know, background music. And that's, that's my biggest thing is because I use YouTube music. You have to, yep. You know, and uh, well, now you can you can purchase yeah, royalty free music. I'm just yeah. not going to at this mm -hmm. point. But you know, using YouTube Music, trying to find the right sound, because if you if you listen to some of my videos or watch some of my videos, rather, um. I got a trailer. Sometimes I'll put it in. Sometimes I leave it out. But it's got a you know, the, the da, 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 you know, it's got got a little bit of a beat to it. Mm -hmm. 
I had half of my subscribers tell me they hated it and the other half liked it. Yeah. So what do you do? Put in, you know, so music. It's kind trying of, to find the right beat for the audience you're looking for. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the. Yep. And you, you know, got to stick with it too. You got to stand by with what you're doing. Right. So, you know, and I, and so I use, a, you know, I find some music that I think works a lot and I'll mm -hmm. use that music over and over and over again. Yeah. You know, I just wish I could find somebody could play a guitar and write the music for a song that I wrote. It's mine. It's my song. I wrote it and I could play it on all mm -hmm. my videos. Yep. And not get that whole copyright yep. warning. You can't copy, uh, it's my song. You, who am I copywriting? Yep. You know. Yeah, I got I got hit on that a lot earlier on early in my channel because me and Justin were messing around. You know, he would be like, um, put it in there. And I didn't know that I was getting hit for, you know, the copyright stuff. And then now, you know, digging back into my analytics and looking at it. And I'm like, this video has got, you know, 2000 views, but it's got a copyright tag on it. So I'm like, dang. That's cool, Scott. I got a song written. I mean, it's written. I wrote it. I, I just can't. I just can't play a guitar. I, I don't, I, you know, I can, I can play a duck call and a goose call and a turkey call. Um, but I just don't have, I just need some music written. Yeah. Hmm. <sighs> yeah. I talked to one guy. Um, we were we were sitting there talking. And he goes because he watches he watched my some of my videos. He's he's not a subscriber. But he just watched some of my videos and he likes them. He says, uh, "You need a you need an original song." I said, "I got one. I just can't. I just don't have anybody to play the play the music." He said, "Well, I can do it." And so I was. I said, "Well, all right." So I sang him a few licks, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of give him an idea of what I was looking at. And that idiot looked at me and said, yeah, that'll cost you about $1,500. Good Lord. And I went, uh, yeah, no, keep it. No. <laughs> Forget I even talked to you. Oh, Mark said that he could see you playing a guitar. <laughs> I wish I could, man. I really do. I could pull up, I could pull out my banjo and maybe hit a, hit a full, few strings, but it ain't going to sound good at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But. You know, starving yeah, musicians, man. They need money too, I guess. But yeah, man, gum. Fifteen hundred bucks, nah. Yeah, to write to, and actually not even to write the music, because I think the music, the the tune I have in my head has already been done. It's just, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, um, when you take a song and change the words out of it. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> caught me off parody. Right. A parody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need to, I, yeah, you're right, Mark. I really need to get, I need to get a, get a hold of Roland one of these days and just, say, dude, listen to me sing this song and then I need some music to it and then find somebody who can sing a little bit better than me. You know, it'd be cool if I did it just because, but, yeah, you know, and then send it and because I, mm -hmm. I kind of, the, the the style of music would be a more of a um a rockabilly type tune yeah or it could be a bluesy tune so and i've sung it both ways and they both sound good yeah find find someone to write it in order to you know produce it produce it for you yeah pretty much just give them the give them the lyrics <laughs> <laughs> I think if you do that, though, it would just take away from, like, you made it. You know what I mean? Like, if you're not the one either playing the song or you the one, quote, unquote, singing it or whatever, you know, it kind of takes yeah. the. It, yeah, it know. takes it, take it away. And 
Yeah. But it's one of those, you know, to do on my to do list, you know, to, to get yeah. done. You know, if I could ever hit, um, you know, I just went over 1500 and, that, um, I love that Nugent uh, sunrise vibe for videos. Yeah. Um, I found something on YouTube, uh, the, the, um, sweet home, Alabama, uh, type, um, music. And I put that a lot in my <laughs> videos. But I've got, like I was saying, I got fifteen hundred now, and if I can get, I don't know what's up with my internet. It keeps going in and out. Yeah, I see that. I Probably got a know, storm. If I, can get, if I can get up to like five thousand, I'll probably start really adding more stuff. Honing in on the small, yeah, the small, the small things. Yeah, and some, you know, and some more effects. You know, yeah. Are you, is it you getting told it's your bedtime? No, the kids. The kids just went down, and my youngest is right across the hall. Uh. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I Mark, say, that would be easy. see what you can do. Once the you know my channel starts, I guess bringing in some sort of revenue, which it probably never will, but. Let's just say by some slim chance it does, you know, I'd probably do the same thing. You know, I would really hone in on, you know, the, the little intricate uh, details of it. So just yeah, to get and, back and, to the people that's watching. You know, and, and it's all about views right now for me. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we, I mean, we talked about this on the phone the other day and, you know, I, I'm not ashamed of it. I just don't get the views that I want. Um, yeah. You know, I've gone four months without a YouTube paycheck. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I figured it out with my CTR that uh, I need about 16,000 views a month to make a hundred bucks. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's guys that are making 10,000 in the first day. You know, but if I could do that, I mean, the whole idea yeah. was to put that money back into the channel um, and buy better, bigger and better stuff. And, you know, yeah. as far as audio and audio and visual equipment. Yeah. Yeah. Because obviously they like they like watching you. They like you as a person. So, yeah. you know, providing that better, that better content for them. But I think that's a misconception, too, that people have about making a YouTube channel because, you know, they see some of the big, okay, wigs. Billy, have a good night. They see some of the big wigs out there and they're like, Oh, you know, this is, you know, they're, they're making millions of dollars like just off YouTube. And it, you know, it's not the case. Like you don't make that much money off of it where they make it though, is like their side hustle. So like, yeah. you know, like ducks, for example, like they make most of their money off of the, the product that they're selling. Right. So, they don't make it off the actual YouTube. There, yeah, there's very few. I, I I saw something the other day. I think Roberto Blake um, said it the other day, and it was um, only ten percent make it to ten thousand subscribers. Mm -hmm. Well, even at 10,000 subscribers, you're not making a killing in, in money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, you're really not. Um, it's the guys that have 1 million subscribers are the ones that are, you know, are making, are making the money. And um, yeah. I, I don't think I'll ever be able to do this full time or, mm -hmm. or, or do it for a living, you know, um, I just like for it to pay for the gas and the shells and I'd be a happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like the reason why I keep doing this and my drive behind it is like, I was so ingrained with Facebook ever since like Facebook first came out. Cause before it, you know, I had MySpace. 
Right. And Facebook, people are always asking the same crap over and over and over. Like, you know, how do I build a blind? How do I build the blind? I, I just drew this place. How do I build a blind? And it's like, it's almost like every week it's somebody different yeah. asking the same exact question. So I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm going to start making this content. And every time I see a question pop up, I'm just going to keep just throwing the video at it. And I'm like, look, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. So I don't know. So that way, you know, it kind of keeps me busy. I'm able to answer questions without having to type. You know, I'm videotaping it. And also, uh, my son thinks that I'm a movie star because I'm on TV. Um, you know, because he'll cut all, the cut all my YouTube channel on the on the TV. And he likes watching himself, too. So, you know, he thinks that's yeah. like, the coolest thing ever, you know. Um, and being, so able, being able to watch your channel in the off-season, too, I think is another cool thing. You can go back and, like, relive the moments. Well, that too, and that was, you know, you know, I've been asked, you know, a couple of times, uh, oops, um, you know, why did I start a channel? And I, and it's very simple. Um, I was out in the, I was out on the lake scouting for teal one day, and uh, this kid and uh, came up and uh, where I was at, and he thought I was broke down, and I said, no, I'm, I'm good. And, he goes, yeah, it's been my first year teal hunting. I don't even know what I'm looking for. And I said, well, let me show you. And he, after it was all done, I said, you know, that day was done. He looked at me and says, man, you, you have a YouTube channel? I said, no. He says, man, you really need a YouTube channel. <laughs> you really need one. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm like, okay. So nine months later, I started one, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And another big, kind of the same instance, like the big push for me was um, Justin up there in Virginia. Like, you know, we, we used to go out on these deer hunts because, you know, I was a diehard deer hunter back before I started duck hunting. And, um, you know, some of the, it wasn't nothing for us to go to a place and us have two, you know, two to four deer down before like hour right after shoot light. And like, you know, the deer come through and like flocks and all that sort of stuff. And he, he always told me, he was like, you know, maybe we should start videotaping this, you know, because he was like, I'm pretty sure people would think that, this, you know, this is pretty cool. And then, yeah. you know, of course me being in the army and then moving all over the place, it kind of screwed up the whole mix. But, um, he was, he was another big push of why, why I did it. So kind of like the same, same thing. It was somebody else that kind of instigated it. I mean, I didn't even have a Facebook right, page until I started YouTube. I didn't you have Facebook until I started YouTube. No. I didn't have no social media whatsoever. None. Yeah. I knew the stuff existed, but I, I didn't have anything. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, nothing. Uh but yeah, I started. I started with Facebook when it first first opened up, and then um, what was next? It took a while to get into Instagram because I was a big film guy. Like I didn't shoot any digital forever, and then um, and then TikTok. I was on TikTok pretty much when it uh, it was able to get downloaded because I was out there on recruiting. So I wanted to yeah. hop on that to try to recruit more people because I knew it was going to be like the next hot thing. Mark, you're not missing out on anything on Facebook. Now you might as well just, uh, if you haven't been on it yet. Might as well just stay off there. <laughs> yeah. I get in trouble on Facebook. It's, it's so full. It's like so much like politics and all that sort of stuff. It's nuts. Oh, uh, YouTube censoring you. YouTube like, is getting there too. Uh, and and I'm pretty sure though we got the numbers dropping off here. I'll go ahead and leave it with but like there's groups that are made for duck hunters, right? Yeah. So you'll have like all things waterfowl. It's one of the uh, largest yeah. Facebook groups out there for waterfowl hunters. And you can't get a damn thing posted up on that group. Because if it's something that either they don't agree with or um 
you know, they, they just don't want you to like public size, like your YouTube video or something like that. Right. Like even still, yep. like, if it's really, let's say it's a kid and it, you took nothing but kids out and it's not you shooting or anything. It's to like showcase the kids. They still won't even post that stuff up. Like right. it's wild to me, but, and that's where I, I go, kinda got I go to that. I go to that, to that group to do nothing but research. Mm-hmm. Yep, and just all the comments. I, I, and all I do research from from what they're saying. You know, yep. I, I strictly research. Um, and like I used to listen, I, I used to listen and watch all the guys from the Midwest, like all the you know freelance duck hunter, the duck gun, you know, all that stuff. And yeah, like the duck gun, he has his Facebook group, and now he's gotten to the point where um, my buddy from Maryland, the versatile hunter, he was in the chat earlier. Um, he, he hit the nail on the head with the name of it. I forget the, the name that he called it, but pretty much like they changed it over to where, you know, the admin has to approve it. So it's either, you know, the duck gun guy or it's freelance and they won't let you post your YouTube stuff up in that channel anymore because I started hitting it earlier. It was before they started posting all their duck hunting stuff, like their, right. their old videos. And I was just posting up my duck, my, um, my boat build and being that I was putting out my boat build videos before duck gun was, I guess they must've got pissed off with the settings on it. So now you can't post any YouTube content in it at all. He won't approve it. So it's like, I don't see how you're going to be that petty about a YouTube video. Like I don't understand it. Yeah. I, I have, you know, daddy duck 365. It's a Facebook page, uh, but it's not a group. It's my page. Yep. And I just post what, I want on there, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's just linked to my YouTube. It's yeah. like my Instagram. It's just linked to the, yeah. you know, to everything. And that's all I want it for. I don't, I don't, you know, I, I'm not using it. I'm using it for me and, you know, and, and that's it. Um, you know, now I'm now daddy duck, the, the Facebook page does subscribe to other groups that way that when I, because when I, if I post something there, I can share it to somebody else. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But. Yeah. Well, I, that's just the way social media is going nowadays. So, but it seems like everybody's starting to drop off and go to bed now. <laughs> yeah. It looks like that way. <laughs> that's what it's normally like the hit time for me is about right now. That's when the, the viewer count starts going down. So, but. I appreciate you I coming on with me tonight, Matt. Hey, not a problem, brother. Not a problem. I enjoyed it. Got to do it again. So I know. Um, next next week, I plan on. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just so, saying uh, I enjoyed it. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I know next week I plan on having. Um, Contendia Creek waterfowl. She makes duck duck calls um, on the live stream with me, so we'll see. I'll get her linked in this weekend and get her spun up on what needs to have or how to you know get it up on the screen and um, right. hopefully it, hopefully it's decent. It'd be fun. I right. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, yep, I gotta I, I'm I'm gonna have to go here in a minute because I've got a I got an early morning. I got to be on yeah, the road sure. by four, so. Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, but, uh, I'll talk to you later, Matt. I appreciate it. All right, man. Enjoyed it. You take care, and I'll see you next week. All right. All right. All right, everyone. I appreciate everyone tuning in this, uh, this week. And next week, like I said, I'll have send me a crew or foul with me hopefully if everything works out um i got all of her contact information and i'll get it all set up this week again and i'm hoping to go through um you know how she makes duck calls how she started her business her drive behind uh doing um you know duck calls just in general but we'll see how it goes hopefully we can get it set up and i'm going to go ahead and
to bed. It's been a long day. I appreciate every single one of y'all that's been active in the comments, and I hope to see you next week. And until then, I've been Chris. It's been Duck Lope Outdoors. Y'all stay safe out there.